here, sir. I am C-3PO, human cyborg relations, and this is my counterpart, CR-10. Here we go folks, welcome to the workshop or the shed. So uh, I had the issues with the 3PO bearing, which is this nearer part, and the shoulder bell, where I didn't realise that there's actually, uh, you can see here, so that part along the bottom there, I'll move my hand so it focuses, that part along the bottom, down here where my finger is, that is actually a support structure, which when I printed this out the first two times, I didn't have supports in there. So of course, when it tried to print that overhang, the filament just went everywhere because it had nothing to print onto. So I printed it this time with the supports, which will pop out. Uh, I, really, I need to reprint the other side as well, which I'll do soon once I've mirrored the shoulder bell. But anyway, that has come out reasonably well. I don't, it's not perfect, but it's, it's pretty damn good. And the shoulder bell, I don't know whether we actually class it as that for 3PO. I'm used to Stormtrooper terms, but yeah, that's come out really nicely as well. So I just wanted to say that it took about, what was it now, 21 hours, uh, it says, on the 3D printer, which is really good. Uh, as you probably know, this is the Creality CR10 S5, and that's printed out really nicely. So again, that's the C3PO bearing and the shoulder bell. These are the Jesse M files printed at 107% size, and these are the version 2 files with hinge uh, you'll know what I mean if you've got the files downloaded there's an option for a hinge or an option without hinge and I've gone for the option with hinge which is basically under that support material there I believe that's where the hinge will go so anyway um, very nice and I'll do more updates soon speak to you later hey there folks Dan here so carrying on with 3PO printing out the bearings, the shoulder bearings, which will basically go on the side of the torso and connect to the shoulder bells. So this one here, you might be able to see that gap in there. There's, there's quite a bit of, it's not actually coming apart, but there's quite a few areas where there's sort of some separation in between those layers. And this is the first time, I'm actually just experimenting and apologies if people shock and awe with this one, but I thought I'd actually try printing these. They're just literally on 5% um, infill. I thought I'd give that a go and just see how it works. The bog standard on the Cura slicer is 20% infill. So I kind of went one extreme to the other and did 5%. And I don't know whether that's why it's pretty, I don't know, unstable. Maybe because there's not enough support material inside. So what you see in the background is actually me reprinting both of the shoulder bearings at 10% infill. So we'll see how that goes. Um, anyone's got any other pointers, feel free to just pop them below. If you think I've done anything else wrong with the settings that might have done it. Otherwise it came out pretty decent, to be honest. But as I say, there we go. That's the shoulder bearing, 5% infill. Um, and yeah, any other comments, let me know. I'll see how the other prints come out with 10% infill, which is what's going on in the background now. Um, cheers everyone, speak to you later, bye! Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Hello, I am C-3PO Human Cyborg Relations. So I'm learning more and more as I go with the 3D printing, of course, it's a learning curve and I'm quite new to it. But using Cura, I actually uh, was a bit cleverer again this time. So last time, uh, this is the previous part, I actually printed this part um, this way around, which means that the support was actually printing all of this section around here, just under my finger. So there was a lot of wasted filament, basically, because I was printing lots of supports. Now, if you simply turn the piece around, as this one's printed, this one on the printer, you're only printing that tiny support in there. So again, I'm just trying to maximize what I do with these prints. Um, I've only just literally come out to look at this so I'm not 100% sure how it's gone, as I haven't checked it. Last time we had the separation 
actually that is a lot better now the previous part had a lot of separation there's a little bit in there maybe but that does look a lot better this is the previous part that had all those areas that you can see where it's sort of been separating away you can see that quality of that is quite poor in places so again this is now 10% uh, infill although chatting with some of the wonderful uh, folks on the C3PO Builders uh, Facebook I might I'll probably redo these later with a much higher infill this was only 10% uh, and a few other parts as well I'm again learning now that some parts especially limbs and other areas would really benefit from a significantly higher infill um, but these are fine for now they will keep me going uh, see what we get and carry on from there uh, next up might move on to the legs although to be honest with you I'm very tempted to brave it and try the torso oh that is actually really bad I don't know why that has very badly dropped that is bizarre that should be flat all the way around almost like the beds moved I'll have to investigate anyway thanks for now see you later hello again and welcome back to the workshop so I've done a couple of videos, which I'll probably have now put together, magic of editing. And these are the C-3PO shoulder bearings. So I originally started off, I was experimenting with different infill percentages. So I did one of these at 5%, which I think was this one. Yeah, it was this one here. Uh, and then basically it had loads of um, separation in between the layers in there. Now, whether that's because of the infill, I don't know but that obviously wasn't very good. And then speaking with some of the uh, folks on the C3PO Builders Facebook page, um, I, I'd already started printing at 10% infill, which has come out reasonably, to be honest. But some of them were saying that's a very, uh, it's a high stress point. So if you're gonna 3D print a part like that, that's taking a lot of abuse, a lot of stress, you really want to go for a higher infill. So I've basically moved away from that. Also as well, the 10% infill, I don't know whether you can see it here. If I put, just, oh blimey, that's stuck. Let's take this one off. Here, boy. That is well stuck. There we go, that is good bed adhesion, that is. This one here, when it printed on the bed, if I sit it like that, you might be able to see this area here, that is a whopping great shadow. I don't know how, that's basically compressed through the print. You can see the, the separation line there just disappears. So I can only imagine that the somehow it warped. Uh, again, I don't know if you can catch that on camera, that it shrinks here. That's the sort of narrowest point. But anyway, that was at 10% uh, infill. And then uh, a couple of the guys, Terry and Pedge, uh, apologies if I missed anyone else, said high stress areas like that, you might be better with a higher percentage infill. So these are now printed at, I think I went 50%. I'd have to check Cura but these are around 50% infill and I was actually watching it as it printed. And obviously you can see that much uh, stronger infill, much stronger structure inside. So hopefully that's going to be good. But again, this is the Creality CR10 S10, sorry, Creality CR10 S5. So the monstrous machine. And again, now I'm, I'm really impressed with the quality of that print. Again, there doesn't seem to be that weird separation that I had on some of the earlier less or lower infill prints. So anyway, there we go. That's kind of that. So I've now got two shoulder bearings. So these can go in the recycling, which is fun. And the box of parts is now growing. So again, obviously left and right arms, left and right shoulder bells, and just need to print out some of the smaller parts. So there we go. Um, thanks for that. As I say, the Jesse M files, 100%, um, 100%, and seven percent of the original size. And there we go. Shoulder bearings for C3PO. Thanks a lot. See you later.